the process of anybody great, it's like sometimes initially we play not to lose, right? It's like when you play not to lose, you're worried about making mistakes and then you make more mistakes. Then you set up a game called like playing to win. Oh, I see that these are my opponents. They, they're firing me up, right? And I'm gonna use that as fuel here. But then there's a game where you transcend that called like playing for the love of the game. Like, could you see like there's a possibility where, is it true that you wouldn't be inspired to make real great stuff in the world if you didn't have an opponent? Or could you go out there, no matter what court you stepped on, you were playing for the love of the game. And that's what people saw. Really start to think the number you have, right? The 35 million is the number, right? I want you to go to that place and just look from that place of what is now possible. Okay. What is now possible with who are you being in this place? What's accessible that isn't accessible now? And because we want to start pulling that future into the present. We don't want to wait till then to do it. So I want you to create that place from the third, like I've touched 35 million, that we have the subscribers. This is what's going on in my world. This is what it's giving me access to. This is who I'm being. This is what I'm doing. And I want you to like, we're going to reverse engineer it from there. How can I best be of service to you, my man? The biggest thing is I don't know what I don't know, you know, yeah. in all of these things. So I remember when I went to uh, Napa every year, Brendan, you know, Brendan Burchard. Yeah. Okay. So every year, Brendan puts together a group of his friends. Uh, like you can't pay to go. You basically have to be his friend to go. So it was me and Tom Bilyeu and Mel Robbins and Ed Milet and Lewis Howes and Jay Shetty. It's round table format. So everybody gets 20 minutes to go around the table, ask whatever's on their mind. Some people are putting a book. Some people are figuring out work-life balance, et cetera. And when it came to me, I was like, you know, you guys know me. Like, what's my blind spot? Guys, I don't know what to ask. So pick me apart and like, what's my blind spot? And then it was... <laughs> Tom and Lisa and Brendan and uh, Dean Graziosi, who just kind of tore me apart for 20 minutes in front of everybody, which is great. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> so I think with all these things is like, you know, I've got my game plan that I think is is working. You know, it's like it's the best that I got for what I know and who I am right now. You know, who am I going to be? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> but I mean, I don't know anything as, at the same time. So open, open, man, yeah. open to the generosity, open to ideas, open to new flavors. I'm just trying to change the world. Yeah. And you're doing it, man. So in the 35 million, like, what do you think that's going to afford you? Like that, that it doesn't now, because I know it's not only about the numbers for you. Right. But like, what, what do you think that's going to occur there that, that isn't occurring right now? What is that going to do? Is it access? Like, what do you look in to experience when that occurs? I don't know. And, and, you know, maybe that's a problem. What mm -hmm. I know is I look at a lot of the content right now, what are my peers are doing? And it's all about the collapses here and we're going into sterile and like population is on the decline and like the two sides are hating each other. It's just all negativity. And I mean, that's, that's not new, but it's impacting me more than usual. And mm. I, and I don't, I don't like it. You know, it's like, okay, economic collapse is here or starting. Great. Mm -hmm. And like, it's the greatest time to be alive, guys. And it's the greatest yeah. time to create more prosperity than ever. Right. In your entire family lineage, like you have the greatest opportunity of all time. Right. Yeah. And so I just want to get that message out. Okay. You okay. know, like I, I'm, I feel like I'm a lighthouse in a storm and, and I'm just trying to, I'm this little candle, maybe not even a lighthouse. I'm like a candle in the in a in a storm. <laughs> really, you know? Wow. Yeah. Well, I mean, listen for the size that I've got, it's great. We've hit, you know, whatever million subscribers and half a billion views or whatever. But it's still it's still a drop compared to everything that is being consumed. Right. Um, and I'm not the only one putting out positive content, but it but it feels like there's like it's a one to one thousand ratio of like positive to negative. And yeah. uh, I want to, I want to fight that. When you say that it's hitting you more than normal, like it's it's impacting you more than normal, what does that mean? The people who I respect, both from a content creator perspective and interviews and guests, like they go on people's shows, are increasingly talking about negative things instead of positive things, and and they're taking something negative and like maybe trying to have a little positive spin somewhere, but it's a lot more negative 
than it used to be. And there's some channels now that like I used to watch religiously and like just don't watch anymore because I feel worse watching it. You know, yeah. like I get consumed by it. like, wait, what is it? Why am I, why do I even care? I don't care about this. Why am I watching this thing? Yeah. Um, and it's working. I mean, the reason why they do it is because it's working. Because when they go that at that angle, it gets 10 times the number of views. So they continue going down that angle. Right. Uh, it's a lot harder to win being positive than negative. Yeah. You know? So is there any part of you, right? That's like, man, these guys 10 times faster because they're going negative and I'm kind of slow and steady doing the right thing because this is what my heart says. But like, this this is how these guys are scaling. Like, are you feeling like there's a there's a battle? No, um, okay, no. I, the battles with myself. That's like, man, how do I make the light stronger? Good. You know, like I don't know the answer. Um, like, and that that I decided. I mean, Devin, I decided that a long time ago. Like the first top ten video I did profiling somebody was Kanye. Yeah, it's the top ten rules for success from Kanye. It was the top 10 stupidest things Kanye has done. It's an easier video to make. It would get 10 times, 100 times of views because because we just love dunking on whoever. Dunking That's on it. Kanye, dunking on Elon, dunking on whoever's president, whatever, right? Uh, and it's like, I feel gross doing that. So it's like, I don't want to, I don't want to do that. So the fact that my contemporaries might be going down a more negative path, it's like, I definitely don't want to go chasing down that Good. at all. Um, but it's like, how do we make positivity louder? And I, I, make I mean, I'm, okay. I'm fighting every day to try to figure it out. Okay. All right. I, it's, it's, it's percolating. I see it. So I see a vision. Now, one of the things you mentioned, you said it slipped out of your mouth. You was like, I'm trying to fight it. Right. I'm trying to fight against it. Now, now, you know, I listen to language. One of my teachers was a woman named Byron Katie. She has this thing called the school of the work, Right. And basically, it's brilliant because she kind of goes into um, questioning unquestioned beliefs to turn around, right? So she has just basically four questions, you know, uh, is so there's this belief you have, uh, the negative is outweighing the positive. Could be true, right? So the first question is like, is it true? Yeah, 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 I could say that's true, Deb, right? And then it's like, can you absolutely know it's true? that negative is outweighing positive, right? Because I could look and say, I go to this family and all they're rocking is Evan right now. That's all they're rocking is my man, Evan. So in that family, I don't know if it's outweighing, I mean, I don't know if negativity is outweighing the positive in that, fa right? So do we know it's true? Okay, say we say yes. And then the question is always this, when you believe the thought, whether it's true or not, when you believe the thought, that these guys, my contemporaries, uh, the negative is that I'm, I'm only a candle in this world and, and my light isn't as loud. When you believe that thought, how do you react? So think of a moment when it's like, this is happening. I see my contemporary. I see it blow up, right? Oh, see, I'm, I'm the light here and they're blow like this is taking off. Like, how do you react in that moment when you believe that thought that that's really true? So there's a subconscious and a conscious. The mm -hmm. subconscious is unease. Like here's somebody who, who's a trusted source for me, who I've, I've, I've loved over the past X number of years or whatever. And mm -hmm. I get drawn into the negativity and the, and the talk of collapse and everything else. And then it shifts to like, okay, but like now we got to, what are we going to do about this guys? Yeah. You know, it's like, it, it's a, uh, the the aggressive language, I guess, or fight or whatever is a is a is like how do I like take my candle and turn it into a lighthouse or pour like gasoline and like light the world up, right? The frustration leads to a desire to create massive action in the opposite direction. Right. So it's like I see this, I, you know, it's uneasy. There might be some judgment there. And then and then I use it to flip it around and kind of fuel me, right? I, I kind of use that to fuel me. Yeah. So, so same situation. This occurs. These people do what they're doing because people are always doing the best they can with the thinking they have. If you if you thought like your contemporaries, they'd be doing the same thing. Think about it, right? Like people are always doing the best they can with the thinking they have. Yeah. There's a thought, right? There's a thought. Like I, I would hey, just layer values in there too, but sure. Right. And values like. 
Look, when my, my father turned our house into a crack house when I was 16, right? Now, I had so much judgment at first. And I was like, how can he choose crack over me? And I realized at some point, like my grandmother had passed and he took it a certain way, right? And it was like, yep. wow, he was doing the best he could with the thing. He's clean now, but he was doing the best he could with the thinking he had. So what that allowed me to do is free myself from, you know, any judgment and, and all of that and, and allow people their process. And if I was thinking like my father, I would have done the same thing, right? So it's like, this thing happens, Evan. They're doing what they're doing. Same situation. Who would you be without the thought? Who would you be in that situation? They're doing what they're doing. Same exact situation. Who would you be without the thought that like, they're blowing up faster than me, or I'm uneasy about this, or they're doing something, you know, I'm the little light in the same situation. You see it happen, but you don't have that thought. How would you react then? Which thought am I eliminating? Yeah, the thought of negativity is kind of winning the day. Like that's 10 times faster than my little light over here. Okay. So if I were to look out and see just positivity everywhere, it doesn't even have to be positivity. It's like okay. they're doing what they're doing. Yeah. Right. There's no unease. There's no, they shouldn't be doing this. There's just, this is just people doing what they're doing. Right. Who would you be without the thought that there's something wrong with it or it's winning the day? Who would you be without that? I mean, it's less that they shouldn't be doing it. I'm not judging them for what they're doing, uh -huh. but who would I be? Well, how uh, would you react differently? Like less inspired to get up and go. So you'd be less inspired. Yeah. Yeah. So that's interesting. So just consider that you've created a game, right? Where you need this to be inspired. Yeah. I mean, need is a strong word, but yes. Right. The process of anybody great. It's like sometimes initially we play, we, we play not to lose, right? It's like when you play not to lose, you're worried about making mistakes and then you make more mistakes, right? Then you set up a game called like playing to win. It's like, what would playing to win? Oh, I see that these are my opponents. They, they're firing me up, right? And I'm going to use that as fuel here. But then there's a game where you transcend that called like playing for the love of the game, right? Like, like could you see like there's a possibility where is it true that you wouldn't be inspired to make real great stuff in the world if you didn't have an opponent? Or could you go out there no matter what court you stepped on, you were playing for the love of the game. And, and, and that's what people saw. Like when I see you, like, dude, the world needs more Devin. Yeah. And I do. I can pull equally from inspiring stories as well. Like, man, Devin needs to get out there. I need to share more of these stories that I love. Um, but that, that wasn't the question. The question is like, what would happen if I didn't have that reaction to the, to the negativity? If um, that happened and who would you be without that thought? The, even the thought, I need that to be inspired. Again, needs a strong word. I don't, it, it helps me get inspired, right? Like it helps helpful, me get inspired. I guess maybe it's like I can pull from the two extremes where either like I see somebody like, man, I need to put this person on and, we're, and like help spread their message. This is crazy. I got to share this. Or man, the world is so negative. I need to be a force for good. Yeah. Uh, and in the middle, I'm just doing my thing. It's not as inspiring because I don't see the connection to the to the person, right? Like I love what I'm doing, right? I mean, yeah. we've done ten thousand videos. It's been what fourteen years of making content. You know, yeah. like I wake up every day and I make videos and we keep going, right? So I love the process. And and somebody even asked me. Uh, there's a great quote about is it the is it the destination or the process or the journey, and and the answer was it's the company that you keep along the way, which I liked even better. It's like who you're doing the process with is even better than just I love the process, that. right? And so on the days when I'm extra fired up and motivated for for a positive or a negative reason, I'm showing up with extra fire. And on the days when when that's not there, I'm still showing up and doing my thing. If we take it to the extreme where the opposite world exists where there's a lot more it was a thousand of one positive to negative yeah i'm i'm probably chilling you know it's like this is great i don't know <laughs> if i'm even making videos anymore like my it's like right. the mission is complete like 
but I'm not pissed about that. It's like, I don't, I'll find something else to do. Like, this is, this is awesome. You yeah. Know, I don't think that world ever gets created, but I wake up every day trying to make that world. I love um, that. But in terms of like the, I don't even look at them as my competition uh, yeah. or any judgment for them for doing what they're doing. Like, like go, I wish I had more people, I guess, you know, who were, who are fighting, fighting what I see as a good fight, but yeah. I take it more as my responsibility. It's like, okay, people putting out negativity and even what my contemporaries are doing compared to other people is like vanilla compared to what people are, are putting out. Right. Yeah. And so it's like, instead of trying to drown them out or say they're wrong or censor them or whatever, it's like, how can I just be brighter and yeah. more powerful so you still give them the choice to come to the light instead of go to the dark? That, I yeah. believe people are good. Yeah. Like, I believe humans are good. I think if we asked, if you went to people and and you saw how they lived and you gave them a chance to be good or bad, I think most people would be good. And the people who are bad or they're just in a ton of pain. Like, I think people are good. And I think people want good. But I yeah. think it's easy in human nature to get pulled to the negativity. Everybody wants to see like the car accident on the side of the road, you know? 100%. Listen, I acknowledge you for the mission, or, you know, and I'm glad you don't see him as the competition because like what Byron K used to tell me, she was like, sweetheart, defense, defense is the first act of war, right? Because if someone's just doing what they're doing and I don't get defensive about it, right, or react to this, there's no war. It's just them doing what they're doing. The moment I get defensive, that's when the war starts, right? It's me versus them, them versus me. And and you're too good, man. You you you're such a bright light. You have to trust that just continuing to create and make a difference is having a ripple effect, and it is because everybody I know who's experienced you is like this guy is is a you know belief. That's it. That like they they talk about belief and and the impact you've had. And so I just want to encourage you. Like I, I remember I went to this coaching. My coach had this coaching school and. And the first year I was there, I was working and I was transitioning. And by the second year, I had taken off in coaching and he put me on the faculty. So there was these coaches in there who were there for like 20 years, right? Like, like been in coaching for 20 years. And they're looking at this New York guy and they're like, why, why is he on the faculty? And I could feel it, man, right? I could, I could feel some of the hate, right? And But at first it was fuel, right? I was like... <laughs> all that's going to do is make me be even better, right? Like I'm going to take that, I'm going to feel it and I'm going to do it. But I always love them, right? And that's what I love what you're doing with, with your contemporaries. And I remember I got a call last year from this guy from UK. He's a really well-known coach in the UK. And he said, Devin, I just want to call you. I want to apologize. I said, why are you apologizing? He said, you know, I, I, I'm sure you noticed. I don't know if you noticed, but when you were in that school, you know, back in 2013, like we we were hating on you, man. And I wasn't the only one and people. And he was like, I, I never it was amazing because all you did was show us love. Like you always made yourself available. You always. Right. And he said and 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 I realized and all of us like realized that, like, that was just our stuff. And we appreciate you being that bright light. Right. So like you look at, there was this group of people who was kind of in this thing, but it was really my light that allowed them to step into and, and seeing who they're being in the world as well. And I think you're doing the same thing in the world, even though those people may not be calling you and telling you that yet. But but I, I would put my money on. You. Well, dude, I've helped most of these guys. Yeah. Like yeah. in flat leadership and entrepreneurship, I've helped pretty much everybody. <laughs> right. 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 Uh, and even if they have a message that is like way more brash or I don't know, I'm a nice Canadian, you know, like I don't swear. I don't pay, like <laughs> right. people like me. Right. I mean, I have no enemies in the space. There's so yeah. much drama between different factions and like who used to work for who and who sold more books and whoever, like even in the personal development space, people are not living, you know, the thing that they're preaching. There's a lot of jealousy and like, I'm friends with everybody. I'm friends yeah, with everybody. Yeah, yeah. I'm like you in many ways, brother. And, and I navigate so many worlds in personal development. I see that. But like, for me, it's like, I got the same message. It's like, nah, like I'm the bright light in the world. I'm, I illuminate every room I enter and I'm here. My mission on this planet is twofold. One, to love as many people as I can before I die. And I mean, really love people. 
And, and two, like when it's all said and done, I wanted them to say like, he used every bit of talent. Like it was all left on the court. Like there's nothing left in the guy. He, he gave it all. Okay. And so, you know, I see that in you, man, like you're just such a bright light. And I think that the path we're on the 35 mil and beyond we want to keep checking in on, on those limiting beliefs of it's not taking, it's not taking, it, it's taking too long or it's not going fast enough. Like we, we really want to slow that down and say, okay, what is it here that we need to kind of 10 times expand this in, in being because people are experiencing, you've helped everyone. You've helped everyone, all these people in this world. Yeah. And listen, I need, I need like a pat on the back 1% of the days. Like yeah. I live in that zone. Like yeah. get me into YouTube land, thought leadership, entrepreneurship, and I'll kick ass. It's like, no, no, you're doing like, here's how we grow. And I'm the most confident, you know, human alive in my, in my zone. I live there. And so when I live there, it's okay. Now tell me why I suck. It's not that I suck. I think I'm awesome, but I know that I'm missing a million things, but I'm not going home and then crying in the bedroom or looking in the mirror seeing like, man, you really suck. Like, I think I'm doing kick ass, but I know there's tons of other gears that I don't know exist. And that's what I'm trying to figure out, you know, mm-hmm. in, in terms of creating the world of light, right? Like, um, I'm a very reluctant leader. I don't, I'm introvert. I'm shy. I don't like being at the front. I, I don't like giving speeches. I don't like being on camera. Um, I, I do it because of the mission. So, mm-hmm. you know, if you and I are in a room, I don't see you as competition. You're my brother. Like, right. We're just doing it in different ways, right? And your story or my story or whatever, like some way it hits. So if there's negativity in a room and we're both in there and you want to stand up and speak, it's like, I'm good, right? Like Devin's doing it, right? I just wanted to get done, right? I don't need to be the one. But when there's nobody doing it, then I feel called that, okay, well, somebody's got to do it, right? So even the Kanye thing was... Because my friend, that one of my closest friends for years, had this negative blog post that he wrote about Kanye and Taylor Swift, the whole mm-hmm. Beyonce had the greatest album of all time thing. And it was like years after that thing happened, and he was still talking about it. I'm like, Mark, dude, like you can learn from Kanye. You should right. learn from Kanye. And so I, I threw away my day to make a video about Kanye, really just for my friend Mark. Yeah. And then, it, and then that took off. And then we started doing more videos in that, in that ilk. I have no need to be the guy. Like, I don't, I don't even like being the guy. I'd much rather be the guy behind the guy, you know, mm. but, but they're not like, I see so much darkness. And so I feel called that I have to, I have to step up, but I'd, I'd much rather you do it or somebody else. Yeah. Right. So I don't see it as competition. Um, I'm, I like would love to cheer everybody on and I'm just in the, in the crowd, like clapping them up. You, you, you know, it's funny. You you like, you really um, internally like this guy called Clarence Avant. Have you ever heard of Clarence Avant? No, but I'll look him up. Avant, A V A N T. And okay. I'll tell you the Clarence. story. Okay. Uh, internally, you like Clarence Avant, but externally, because you're looking around and nobody's doing it, you had to you had to get in front of the camera, right? Yeah. You're like Quincy Jones. So let me let me tell you okay. why. I love Quincy. So Quincy, right? Transform music. Oh yeah. Quincy, however, and and nobody will argue that Quincy didn't impact a bunch of people. Like, amazing. Quincy's best friend was a guy named Clarence Avon. And Clarence Avon influenced probably 100 times more people in the music industry, in politics, than anyone. And they did a documentary on him called The Black Godfather. And, and his all right. And his whole mission is remind me because this is where I'm at now. Like I'm an extra, I'm more of an extrovert, but when I came on the scene and I was making a lot of difference, like some of these doctors or, or the players, they wanted, they like, Dev, you got to be my secret weapon. Right. So I kind of love that. It was the first, I was like the secret weapon wasn't telling anybody anything. Nobody said they were working with me. And, and I saw this um, documentary called, the Black Godfather, and and it was about Clarence Avon. He started in the twenties when there's a lot of racism, and and the Italian mob was like the only black guy they brought in. He learned the industry, and he was the guy who started getting people knowing about masters. Get your masters right. Okay. 
And in, in the beginning, he's like hard. He's like, they're like, what's, he's like, what's love got to do with it? He's like, if it, if it ain't about the numbers, it don't make, it don't make sense. That's how it starts. But when you watch the documentary, you realize, oh, this guy was all about love. Like he really was a bright light and loved people. And interviews from everyone from Smokey Robinson to Diddy. He saved Diddy's life when he had beef with the West Coast. This is an OG. Uh, Drake, Obama said, I knew I had problems when, when Clarence didn't back me and he was backing Hillary Clinton. Like he got people elected, right? And he was always, he never wanted to be in front of the camera. And then they showed all these Grammy speeches from all these artists. They're like, I want to thank Clarence Avon. And, and nobody outside of this world knew that this guy was this guy. So when I saw it, I kind of loved it because I was like, you know what? I want to be like Clarence Avon, right? Like, like behind the scenes, I'm, the world is shifting. I got a hand in it. People, you know, the bright light is, it's kind of like what you're saying. Like, I want to be the guy behind the guy, right? And then eventually, like, some of my clients are like, Devin, why don't more people know about you, man? Like, we we need your your voice out there in the world. Like, people need to see you. And also, you know, there's a lot of people who think, like, representations uh, you know, I, one of my favorite game changers was a guy who came, this guy, Ted Crawford, and said, yo, I called my boys. I told them, yo, there's a brother. There's a brother doing this content. Because usually I go to these things, ain't no brothers doing the content. And if they are, they're doing someone else's stuff. So so like this guy was so excited. Right. And and it and it brought me out to be like, OK, how do I bridge that gap? And and what I'm hearing from you, Ev, is like internally, you're like Clarence Avon. You want to be like the guy behind the guy, but you know, you've embraced kind of like your Quincy Jones, man, right? Like, like you're really out there and leading the way in many ways, right? So it's like, how can you, you know, honor both, right? I think you'd love that move, like the documentary. It starts a little slow, but I think, I think you'll see what I mean. Like, if there is a power in being the kind of secret weapon behind people too, but uh, I think that, you know, those days are not are kind of behind you in many ways because your voice is so now needed and powerful in the world. So it's like, how do we how do we amplify that? But also, you know, honor who you who you are. Yeah, I mean, I struggled a ton with that. And, and thank you for the you know, I'll go check out that movie. I wrote it down. Um for years, the biggest fight I would get into with my agent is we need your story. We need your story. It's like, Steve, I don't, this is New York guy too. Like, I, I, I don't need it, man. I don't like it. I don't, I don't like, I can't wait till I get in front of the camera again. Like I don't light up when that stuff happens. Yeah. Um, so it's a reluctant roll in, but then people kept, we did these top tens for a bunch of years, right? Yeah. Kanye was the first one. We didn't need a whole bunch of them. And the number one request from the audience was me. I'm like, why do you want me? Like I built and sold the company, but I'm not yay. I'm not Steve Jobs. I'm not Oprah. I'm not like yeah. we profiled like the the legends, right? Yeah. But it was kept. So then my team, so I said, we're not doing me. That I mean, it, it sounds too egotistical and like, what are, what's my story compared? Eventually my team uh, surprised me on my birthday and posted one, made it and posted it to my channel without me knowing on my birthday. <laughs> 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 and uh and people liked it and so like, okay yeah. well i guess they'll do more me so yeah. i recognize now that people learn through my story as well and i can hit some people who who other people can't what i've been focusing on so yes my story and telling my story still learning from all these people what you can learn from their success and then also helping others so whether it's people who are already at the top of their game helping them with their, with their YouTube and getting their message out to the world or people on the come up, you know, yeah. people like you who are already experts at something, but may not have as big a digital footprint or people uh, like mover makers where you came in, where it's like, okay, I, I want to be someone like Devin. You know, I want to have a full-time business. And so I love training those people. And so all that's happening. Yeah. And I feel great about it. Like anytime I look at any of those things, like I feel great. And it's like, okay, and let's go do more. Yeah. Everything you do on YouTube is extraordinary. You give, you're giving content out, right? And then you're using movement makers as your own community, right? You're teaching people in the community how to build their business and things like that. We have a 
Believe Nation community, which is people who watch my videos. Movement okay. Makers is a is a people who want to be thought leaders. So it's a much narrowed down focus. Like if somebody watches a, one of a Kanye top 10 video, yeah. they don't necessarily want to go be a speaker, yeah, an yeah, author, yeah. a coach, right? So this is a really narrow part. But again, like, like why I love doing it is because people can learn through, if I can help some of those people get their story out, people will learn from them when they won't listen to me. Yeah. Listen, man, I love who you are, man. I love your mission. I think, um, you know, it could feel lonely. It could feel lonely when you're walking, you know, when I tell people best day of my life, and, and I mean it, like, you know, I had a client who was like, the, the difference with Devin is when he says best day of his life, he means it. Like, he's like, that's it. I have about 307 Uber drivers numbers in my phone. Wow. Okay. One Uber driver I had, we were talking. And the guy, he he looked like Neo, you, ever, you, you know, like Neo, like yep. the singer, dressed in a suit. He had this, he had like a Civic, but it was like tricked out with lights in, right? He's picking me up, taking me to the airport. He opens the door. Most amazing experience. So I'm like, hey, man, tell me your story. And he's like, yeah, well, you know, I was raised by um, women and, and I want to start this clothing line where we're bringing gentlemen, like being a gentleman is the, is the mission, like bringing, there's not enough gentlemen in the world. I'm like, yo, I love that. So I'm listening to him. I said, well, you know, I, this is what I do with people. You know, are you open to some, some suggestions, right? I want to ask permission. And he goes like this. He goes, yeah, all right. Like, like this, like, like it's not. A, so I go, I said, oh, never mind. Right, never mind. So, so it just gets quiet. So we're in the, now my phone rings and it's one of the the guy the teams like general manager calls me and I'm on the phone and I'm coaching him through something really quick on the phone on the ride. So he must be hearing and saying, oh, this guy, this guy knows what he's talking about, right? I hang up. He says, no, no, no. I want that suggestion. I said, nah, man, listen, what, what, what is this like? Where else in your world are you saying something's important? But then when there's an opportunity, you just kind of like, what? And he's like, no, you're right. He thinks we're on the in the fourth lane on the HOV lane. The dude drives all the way to the other side of the parkway off the off the parkway and stops the car and says, hey, man, I, I really want to. I'm here. I'm locked in. I'm listening. So, <laughs> so it was amazing. We create something with him. And then he sent me a picture two months later. I, I, I gave him some um, coaching on it. He brought me to the airport, followed up. And the guy moved to Louisiana and opened up like this a uh, gentleman clothing uh, uh, brand and, you know, is doing well. But there was another guy to, to our conversation. These, these are like Uber drivers that I, I have these conversations every day because I don't I don't drive. So I create with people every day. But I had a guy he had like a um, this dude had a MAGA hat. Right. And I got friends who are MAGA. The dude, I think he had one of the um, Confederate flags, right, on, on the back of the truck. Like, so I got in the car and I'm like, hey, man, what's up? Like, best day of my life and I'm great with him. And it's all good. Like, I, I don't care what you believe. So the guy's real tight, right? So so he starts talking, Ev, and he's like, and you know how, like, people are talking, but they're, like, subtly throwing bombs. They're like, yeah, this country, you know, real negative, like, when when this one was in and now this one's in and, and this woke society, like he's he's doing the whole thing, right? Wanting like the reaction. And, and I'm just like, man, well, well, let me tell me more, man. Like that must be difficult. Like, you know, so I'm just listening. I'm asking some questions and the guy keeps talking, talking. And and I said, well, well, you open like I, I could see your point of view. I totally see, you know, where you're coming from. Like you think that. People are taking over the world and pushing you out. I, I get it, right? And I say, well, are you open to another point of view? I'm not saying either is right, wrong, good or bad. It's like, let, let's talk, right? Let's just, let's talk. Because I believe that, you know, one of the problems today is people have not learned to disagree without being disagreeable, right? It's like, we got to make someone wrong for us to be right. And actually two people can be right at the same time. They just got a different point of view, right? People can look at this guy and say this and that. So we talk, Ev, I swear to God, the guy. So we get to the airport, the guy comes out, big guy, and says, yo, man, can I give you a hug? And the dude gives me a hug, and the dude's like crying, like, like crying. I'm like, what? He's like, 
you don't realize, man, you, I've never been listened to the way you've listened to me, man. And, and you gave me some things to think about. And I just want to thank you. Right. And to me, like that ain't going to make it on YouTube or that ain't going to make it on TV. But like and I know you have interactions with people all the time, too. We don't want to discount how we're making the world better in those ways, too, in the quiet ways. You know what I'm saying? A hundred percent. And like, listen, like I live 98 percent of the time in that. Yeah. It's like I touch that person's life. It's amazing. And listen, as I'm hearing you tell that story, your story with that guy, the first guy who was opened up his shop, the tailor. It's like, I wish that was on YouTube. It's like it's not discounting anything that I do because honestly, dude, like you mentioned lonely. I don't feel lonely. Like I'm introvert. Yeah. I have if I have Nina, my wife, I'm good. I don't need to yeah, go to yeah. any conference or networking. COVID was great. You know, it's like me and Nina yeah. at home, like, no problem. This is fantastic, right? Like people yeah. fell apart. It was great for us. It's perfect. <laughs> if I lost her, my world would would crumble. So, like, that's a whole other thing. But uh, as long as I have Nina, like I'm good. And it would be easy for me just to sit back and say, uh, I'm, I'm like, I'm kicking ass and I'm helping people. And if you saw the comments every day and the DMS every day, I actually find it easier to get lost in the one-on-ones. I could do one-on-ones all day long. Yeah. And it's so fulfilling to see that you help that one person. Yeah. Uh, I just feel like I'm, uh, it's not enough for what I'm capable of and and I need to be out there doing more. So I have to push myself to go do that. I, I could very easily just be a coach or a investor yeah. or whatever. Um, it's my, Maybe it's my mom's voice who, who kept saying, if you have the ability, you have the responsibility. You know, it's like, you can, therefore you must. And I don't use it as a beat down. Like I'm not sitting here saying, I suck. Like, why am I not doing better and not having a plan? It's like, no, my life is awesome and it's great. And I'm capable of more. So what can I do? And if you're with you. BS, by the way, like call it out and, and let me know, you know. Listen, I'm with you. And this is the thing. See, whenever I hit a ceiling with, with clients or myself, right? I always, what we want to do is recognize the ceiling, acknowledge it. Hey, you did great. You reached this next milestone. And then I'll say, Ev, can you get that acknowledgement? And you'll say, Dev, yeah, I can get it. And now the work is, okay, now we're going to make that the floor, right? So we, we reach the ceiling. We acknowledge how far we've come. We make that the floor, right? And that's our new floor. We create what's next from that. I think that there's a, a, a gift in that because most people who are high performers, their 80% looks like most people's 100%. And to me, that's what, what, what chips away at, to me, when I know that I'm at 80 and I'm not giving 100 I can't stay there because it chips away at my spiritual condition, right? Yeah. Like I feel like I'm cheating the world. So, and I hear that in you, you know, and, and that's why I like connect with you so much. Cause I do think that there's a lot of people doing really good stuff, but they know they are only given the 80 and, and they're kind of resting on it. not that it's good, bad, right or wrong. It's just that I'm not built like that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's just wrong for us. That's all. Yeah. 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 So, you go do you. So, that's it. So when my clients or people are like, all right, Dev, listen, I hear you. You've been the black guy, but like, can we get you out there now to the world? Uh, I, I, I am like, you know, I feel like it's the time. Maybe it's the time and continue to live how we live every day. You know, as much as I like being out in rooms, I'm like, you like, I love space and quiet, man. Walked on the beach with my wife this morning, got some quiet time, even in our home. She knows like we spend a lot of time, but she also like he needs a space too, and and I enjoy that too. So I'm kind of like a mix of like most people would say I'm an. I don't go into extra in in inner because I'm kind of both when at all at all times. So, and what's my homework? What am I working on? I'm gonna watch the Black Godfather. Ev, what I want you to do is really start to think the number you have right. The 35 million is the number. Right. I want you to go to that place and just look from that place of what is now possible. Okay. What is now possible with, you know, who are you being in this place? Uh, what's the what's accessible that isn't accessible now? And, and because we want to start pulling that future into the present. We don't want to wait till then to do it. 
So I want you to create that place from the third, like I've touched 35 million, that we have the subscribers. This is what's going on in my world. This is what it's given me access to. This is who I'm being. Uh, this is what I'm doing. And I want you to, like, we're going to reverse engineer it from there. You know, how are you feeling at this moment? How are you celebrating this? You know, I'm inviting Dev to Canada. We, you know, we we have a real dope house party, whatever it is. Let's go. Like, I, I want you to to go to that place and then we'll we'll look back and create from there. Okay. Watch the Black Godfather. Yep. And I want you to uh see what you like about how he showed up and created in the world and and how you want to be maybe different or take what he learned and to another level. Okay. Quincy Jones had one of my greatest, uh, there's a great line. He said, I mean, he's got lots of great quotes, but not one drop of my self worth uh, depends on your opinion of me. Yeah. Beautiful. I like it. All right. Last, last homework assignment. You're yep. going to do, this is going to be only three weeks. And the goal of this assignment is not to get caught up in it's, it's kind of like watching your thoughts okay. from a neutral place. It's not going to be about like, oh, I got this low grade thought and I want to like just persist, you know, just stay in it. Right. It's just I want to watch it from neutral. I want you to start capturing your like any low grade thoughts that come. Just capture them. Write them down. You know. Oh, this is taking too long. Uh, you know, my voice isn't hitting enough people. Uh, you know, this person doesn't appreciate whatever it is. We want to capture it. And we're mm -hmm. going to do something with that work. Now, the key to that is don't get caught up. It's just, I'm just yeah, yeah. I'm the observer. Neutral place. I'm the, neutral place. I'm with neutral you. Place. I'm the observer. Oh, that came up. Yeah. And what, what you'll see is you'll notice there'll be some stuff that comes up once more than you thought. There'll be stuff there that you didn't even think was there. And we'll play with that. And and is this meant to be a passive exercise or or you want like a focused work on it? I want you some do some focus work because if you okay. want to do some real work, we, what we're okay. going to do is we're going to capture the patterns, right? It's like GPS. You know, it's like if I put 300 Green Street in my head, I'm going to end up at 300 Green Street. Mm -hmm. If I put, you know, 1200 Waters Place, I'm going to end up at 1200 Waters Place. And so even these subconscious thoughts of, oh, this isn't happening fast enough. I put that in my GPS it's going to end up at not happening fast enough. So what we want to do is we want to capture these so we can clear them out. There's a process I'll do with you. And then we'll recreate on top of that. We'll clean it out, rewire. And that, that'll that be the practical process to the video you sent me. Like, how do we do that? Mm -hmm. First, we got to capture all the low grade thoughts. Okay, done. Let's go. All right. Okay, I just finished with Devin. And he gave me three pieces of homework. And I thought as a little change to how I normally make content, I'm gonna bring you guys behind the scenes of me actually doing the work that people assign me to do. So the three bits of homework from Devin were, one, I need to think about me from having 35 million subscribers and what does life look like? And so I'm gonna do, I guess, a little meditative or a journaling exercise to figure out what that looks like for me. Two, we gotta watch The Black Godfather and I gotta see where, where that exists, if I can get it on Netflix or I have to download it or, or find it, hopefully it's accessible. And three is to watch my negative thoughts. What do you call it? Low grade thoughts. And so again, uh, a, a separate meditation or journaling session thinking about my low grade thoughts. And I'm gonna do them now. Well, not like right now, but some of them right now because uh, I don't wanna wait. I don't wanna wait, I don't wanna wait. I'm gonna take you guys a little bit behind the scenes to watch me do it too. See if you like it. So step one is let's look up Black Godfather. This is an easy one, I guess. Black Godfather, 2019 documentary, two hours long. Al Capone was a cast? Wow. This is the guy, Clarence Avant, and watch the Black Godfather on Netflix. All right, great. Well, we're gonna, we're gonna be watching that soon. Let's learn a little bit about Clarence Avant. 92 years old, died in 2021, so he just passed away. Well, he lived a long life, and uh, let's go dive in on his story. Okay, Nina. I need to sneeze, and I couldn't sneeze right now. <laughs> I just made it worse. Okay, just 
sneeze now. You'll I be fine. I can't sneeze now. It's gone now. Now it's gone? Is it yeah. my fault? Yeah, it is your fault. Well, you know what? It's really Devin Bandison's fault. I just what? finished the call with him. Okay. He gave me some homework. Okay. One of the homework is I need to watch a movie called The Black Godfather and take some notes. Okay. It's apparently on Netflix. Okay. So we're going to watch it. Okay. And we could both take notes. Okay. Okay. Okay, showtime. We're doing our homework. We've been watching Sweet Tooth. So far, so good. The first one there. Yeah, yeah, the Black Godfather. All right, there it is. Boom. Let's watch. So just finished watching The Black Godfather. Great recommendation. I took two pages of notes and thought it would come down here to record some of my quick thoughts while it's still fresh. Let me show you my notes. I like to write in these big notebooks. And then uh, this is, I did a good job to try to make it actually legible. <laughs> My handwriting is not always legible when I'm in a rush to take notes. And I write it down. I had two pages here. We'll go over it quickly. And I do it and then I, I look it over and digest it and then action, action it ties it. So these are just ideas and quotes that came up to me. And then I have to put these into action. So maybe I'll, I'll talk with Devin about it afterwards. So the Black Godfather, he puts people together and they do what they do. So one of the main themes here is he's a connector. He knows a ton of people. He's a connector. He loves introducing people to each other. Um, he built a life by putting people together. His tool is knowing how to manipulate people, but not in a bad way. So helping them act in everybody's self-interest. He knew everybody. He was a celebrity celebrity. He finds common ground between people who are different. So writing some of these, you know, I can connect to something like this, like finding common ground between people who are different. I can definitely connect to that. I don't know that I know everybody or I'm the celebrity celebrity. You know, I think I think that's very generous. Uh, maybe Devin sees something in me that I don't yet see in myself and, and we'll talk more about that. But um, yeah, it was that was definitely fun. Um, he's a historian and a maker of history. I like that. I love studying success and, and have ambitions to make history too. I don't make speeches, I make deals with one of his quotes. So I prefer to be behind the scenes making deals and introing people than to make big speeches. And as an introvert, I can definitely connect to that. Uh, he absorbed the best of everybody he saw. This was a big one for me. I learned from everybody. All the people that I profile on my channel, I've learned something from. And uh, you know, even somebody you hate, you can still learn something from them. And so that was, I mean, that I really liked that message there. He can connect with everyone and he did. I don't know that I can connect with everyone. I think on a human level I can. Maybe I'm still a little shy to do it, but um, Definitely aspirational. Uh, nobody understands what his official title was. I love that because I don't know what my official title is. Clarence was a guy you had to see to put certain kinds of deals together. So for that one, I uh, I love studying business plans and I love studying how people are successful in businesses. And I and because of studying business plans, I can often make connections between different opportunities and in different industries that most people don't see. And so that part, when I saw that, I was like, hmm, okay. I see you, Devin. I see you. There's something here for sure. This one was great. I don't have problems. I have friends. So I think I could do a better job of, of calling on my friends when I have problems. Uh, like my path to 35 million subscribers, I should probably call on my friends more. Uh, he said he's not going to follow a script, not going to do what's expected, which I definitely agree with. Uh, he gave people a platform to help them make a big leap forward. And so this is another one that I really connected with and that he's trying to put people on, he's trying to showcase people. It's what I'm trying to do with movement makers and people in my mastermind, like the next generation of thought leaders up and coming, spreading a message, message of hope and positivity and the people we profile and all the training that I'm trying to do is people may not learn from my voice, but they might be able to learn from yours. And so that's what I try to teach inside movement makers. And I just love the idea of of putting people on and teaching them the skills to be successful, especially in this business, because your message can touch somebody in a way that I can't. So people said he had a feel for what wasn't being done at the time. This one resonated because like I was telling Devin, there's so much negativity right now. There's so much, the world is ending right now. There's so much economic collapse right now. There's so much AI is going to kill us all right now. And that's what seems to be prevalent at the time. And I just see things a different way. I think it's the greatest time to be alive ever. And so I see it a different way and, and I need my voice to be louder. He has the ability to walk into a room and tell people exactly what they needed to hear. I've been told that I need to do that more, but uh, definitely agree with that one. And equality drives him. He wants to see people win. That was page one. Let's quickly go through page two. Uh, he put on a giant five day music festival when Martin Luther King died called it Save the Children. It was the biggest ever music event for black music. I love that it was just a product of 
the, the time. And one of the things that I struggle with is how do I, or do I, be more culture relevant with news. I don't really follow the news. I don't like the news. I think the, the news is very negative. So do I put myself in the middle of news stories and, and spread a message of hope and positivity and belief? Or do I just, do I just keep doing what I'm doing? You know, that's one of the things I keep thinking about. So um, Clarence seemed to put himself in the moment. And so it's definitely something that I can get better at. As a deal maker, he was the best in the business. You know, I love studying business models, but I don't know that I'm the best deal maker. So it could be a hidden opportunity for me. Uh, he mixed worlds and got musicians to perform to support politicians. He pulled most of Hollywood together to support Jimmy Carter. So mixing music and politicians. Uh, he got Hank Aaron, the biggest brand deal with Coca-Cola ever. Uh, he gave people the first real shots. I love that. He never looked for permission. Uh, Diddy said Clarence made sure you didn't get effed in your deals. He was an advocate for the creative people. He helped people in their lives too. He was the guy you called when you were in trouble. He wanted everyone to do better. And then this one really, this is the last quote I wrote down. David Geffen, who was a legend in the music industry said, I don't know how he made a living. He never used to charge for anything. And that quote stuck with me because the last time I was hanging with the people in in the thought leader business in Napa, close to Brendan Bouchard's house, at our round table, I asked for help of, you guys know me, what's my blind spot? And for the next 20 minutes, Brendan Bouchard, Dean Graziosi, Tom Bilyeu, and Lisa Bilyeu uh, all kind of laid into me to say, you give so much and you help so much and we don't know how to pay you. We don't know what your business is. We don't know how to get you paid. Tell us how we can pay you. <laughs> and I was like, I don't know, I don't wanna, it's fine. Like I love helping and serving. And so when David said that, I don't know how he made a living, he never used to charge for anything. There's definitely some magic there. And it made me feel not as weird. Yeah, because the feedback coming out of that group was they don't know what I do or how I get paid and as if as if they should and that was and that should be something i focus more on and that left feeling like uh i don't know i don't know that i i don't know that i do so it's confirmation i guess that uh one of the most successful men behind the scenes in the music world politics hollywood etc people didn't know what he did either okay so task number two is complete i still have task number one and task number three to do number one was i need to imagine myself having reached the goal and imagine what that feels like and write down who i am and who i'm impacting and and the things that i'm doing so I'll, i'm going to do uh, a meditation session or sitting outside tomorrow and see what comes up and i'll bring you on the journey and then Task number three was I need to keep track of my, I feel what you call it, not limiting thoughts, but negative thoughts or low level thoughts. I'll get the exact wording. So the next couple of days, I'm gonna get those done. I'm gonna take you on the journey with me and let's see what I discover. All right, it is the next day, which means I'm doing more homework from Devin today. Today is a Sunday as I'm filming this. And on Sundays, I usually spend a couple hours reviewing my notes from conferences or books or um, rereading things and just planning. And so I'm gonna use that time today to work on homework number one, which was what does 35 million subscribers look like, taste like, feel like? And I'm just gonna see what comes up, take some notes, keep you posted. Okay, let's take a look at what I wrote down. So what does 35 million subscribers feel like? Started with being an important part of people's daily routine. If I think about the channel right now, it is an important part of a lot of people's daily lives, but it could be more important. Is it the most important part of somebody's routine? Is it a must do every day to get their mindset right? And for some people, yes. And for a lot of people, not yet. So I've got some work to do. I put in being able to put people on and give exposure, being able to open bigger doors to have a bigger impact, traveling more and spreading a message around the world. I travel a lot, but it's been mostly to the US. I'm in the US twice a month, uh, where you know this could be a lot more global. Ripple effects in the culture, fashion, politics, entertainment, and sports. 
making Imagine practical. That one's from uh, John Lennon, you know, the song Imagine. Imagine all the people living life in peace. You hoo you know, you may say I'm a dreamer, but I'm not the only one. And it's like, how do you take that message and make it practical and, and make it help, you know, entrepreneurs, but the world, I'm gonna go down that path. Creating a real community for people, the family they need and never had, bringing more people together instead of pushing them apart, making it okay for people to suck at the start, launching products that people will proudly wear and use, symbols of identity, partnering with titans outside of thought leadership. And I've helped almost everybody basically in thought leadership. So now, you know, it's time to expand beyond that. Uh, being a bigger unifier, creating easier programs for people to follow, more step-by-step, -step, spending less time on smaller projects and tasks, give responsibilities away to people sooner, uh, being better at capturing the magic that happens one-on-one, -on -one, uh, being better at personal brand storytelling, and a lot of this is what I'm currently doing, just bigger, faster, and better. What I realized in looking at that list is I'm already doing this stuff. You know, I'm already doing it, on, but on a smaller scale. And, and smaller scale, you know, I mean, it's, I'm grateful for everything that I've been able to accomplish. And we're hitting way more people now than I was five years ago or 10 years ago. And it's easy for me to sit there in gratitude. And, and a lot of this stuff is just doing this on a bigger scale, getting it done faster and being better at it. And so I'm looking at the list I don't know anything pops off yet from the page of this is the major breakthrough or this is the big shift that I have to make. It's, uh, I'm already doing a lot of this stuff, but I'm still playing small compared to what I could be doing. And this list is a good starting point as uh, clues to push faster. I love these thought exercises. Okay, it is time to complete my three-part challenge from Devon. And this is the one that I am least looking forward to, which is to monitor my low-grade thinking. I think that's what he said, low-grade thinking, low-grade thoughts. So I'm coming to my basement because we are gonna go in here. This is my sauna and it is, what is a combination of infrared, red light therapy, grounding mat, and uh, EMF protection. And it is gonna get very hot in here. So I figured I'm gonna sit on that uh, stool and torture myself in the heat and torture myself with my thoughts and hopefully come out with some serious low grade thoughts so I can complete my homework. Okay, I just had a really hot sauna followed by a really cold shower and let's see what I came up with. I, I had to tear the page out of the book because it was getting all crinkly from the sweat <laughs> and the heat and the humidity. And listen, this was actually really hard. And this is maybe something I'll talk to Devin the next time that I, I talk to him because as soon as I had any kind of negative thought, first I had to really force myself to go negative. Like, okay, you hate yourself. This is terrible. You know, I had to like really try to, try to go to a dark place because I don't live in low grade thoughts. And then anytime I came up with one, I instantly said, yeah, but this, and went to the positive like automatically. And I think that's a good thing. And I probably trained it uh, in myself over the years because it didn't used to be like that. So every single negative thought that I came up with, even when I forced it, automatically had a positive response afterwards. Uh, but that, that's not so helpful when you're trying to uncover low grade thoughts. Uh, so let me share with you what I forced myself to come up with. Okay, low grade thoughts. I'm not growing fast enough. I'm not making enough of an impact. The plan isn't working. I don't know what to do. People won't help me. I won't figure this out. I can't get people to care. People come for the celebs, not my contribution. I haven't mobilized my subscribers. My content is not important enough. I can't pull this off. I'm not bold enough to do this. I'm not taking the actions fast enough. The dark is more powerful than the light. I'm not bringing enough value and I'm stuck. And then even look at this and, and, and me reading it back, it feels gross. Like, no, I don't like any of these things. And I come up with solutions right away for all of these things. But um, anyway, I have finished my homework assignment. So we did all three things he told me to do. We watched The Black Godfather. I came up with what 35 million subscribers feels like. And then I came up with my list of low grade thoughts. I'm gonna submit my homework to Devin, see what he says, and then maybe we do a round two. And one last request. This is a new format that I'm trying out on my Tell Me Why I Suck series where 
I bring somebody on, they tell me why I suck, and then I take you a little bit behind the scenes of the things that I'm doing afterwards as a result of the advice that they gave me. So if you want the interview to just end, uh, amazing, let me know in the comments. And if you wanna see me and the homework I'm doing and what I'm learning and applying uh, in this vlog style, it takes obviously a lot more work to do this. So if you like it, let me know in the comments and I might keep it up. To see the amazing training Devin gave my Movement Makers students, check the video right there next to me. I think you'll love it. Continue to believe, and I'll see you there. Kobe Bryant, when he retired, he told his daughters, he said, if you get this, you'll have a successful life. And he had all his, his trophies, he had all his accolades, and he said, this isn't the dream. He said, the dream was waking up 5 a.m.